Right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat mga kaguro. And of course, welcome back to Guru Pinoy. Tonight's discussion is centered on general education. Of course, we'd like to welcome back all the members of Team Piaché. Again, if you are still not a member of Team Piaché, please become a member. Pwede po pong humabol na yung mga lahat po na magtitake ng left this coming September. You can answer our quizzes. You can watch the full-length video. You can download our PDF. And of course, there's our free pre-board and free final coaching. So again, if you'd want to become a member of Team Piaché, just send us a message to our Facebook page, which is, of course, Gurung Pinoy. Now, we also would like to welcome the members of Team Bruner. Team Bruner naman po yung ating newest team. And this is for the left takers in March of next year. So if you'll be taking your, your left, no? March next year, your team will be Team Bruner. And of course, we also have our 50% uh, discount to the current members of Team Piaché who will be taking their let in March. So again, mag-send lamang po kayo ng message at yung Facebook page. If you will be taking the let in March, then you are going to be part of Team Bruner. If you'll be taking your let this September, po pwede pa pong humabol as part of Team Piaché. Just send a message to our Facebook page. Now, if you have sent a message, if you have um, um, joined us, now become a member. Uh, maghintay lamang po kayo. Kung wala pa pong reply, babalikan po kayo ng ating admin tomorrow. Minsan po kasi tapos na, no? Out of, of office hours na. And so, babalikan po kayo ng ating admin later. Okay? So, again, that's Team Bruner. That's March 2023 na team ng Gurong Pinoy. Now, we also have our subscribe, answer, and win GCash and Load promo. Ito po yung ating papremyo. And this would be for Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7pm whenever we have our live stream. And for this week, we are going to have our GCash and Load winners coming from our YouTube, which of course is Guru Pinoy. So if you'd want to join, po pwede po kayo pumunta sa ating YouTube channel. And once we tell you that a certain question is a question of the day, malalaman niyo po pag question of the day siya dahil meron po siyang logo, no, yung nakikita niyo sa screen, na Guru Pinoy, then we will be taking the first five people who have answered the, the question correctly, the question of the day correctly. Now, sa mga winners natin last Monday, hintayin lamang po na later after this live stream, we will be sending your, your prizes. Okay, so uh, kung wala pa po kayo, hindi pa po kayo nagsisend ng inyong number, mag-send na po kayo if you were part of our five lucky winners on Monday natin na subscribe, answer, and win. Again, that's only on YouTube for this week. And of course, make sure that you have included the number, no? number ng item na ating sinasagutan para po mapabilang kayo sa ating five lucky winners at of course, make sure na tama po yung inyong sagot. Now, as I have mentioned, this is general education tonight, but of course, let's all have our opening prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learned. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. All right, now once again, this is general education. Please do like, love, share our video. It's very important that you are sharing our video, of course, so that we can reach out to more Kaguro. And of course, you can also support us by sending us stars through Facebook and also sending us super chat, super stickers naman sa YouTube. Maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng ating mga star senders. While waiting for the rest of you to please love, like, share our video, let me just greet our star senders. Ma'am Vivian Vasquez Bailon, thank you so much po for sending us stars. Ganun din kay Ma'am or Sir Joe Waneza Neri. Maraming salamat po. Ma'am Celine Corpus Agkangan. Thank you for sending us stars. Sir Ryan Laksina Sakido. Maraming maraming salamat po. Ganun din kay Ma'am Jovelyn Raras. Thank you for sending us stars. Okay. Uh, Sir Nick L. D. Ocampo Jr. Maraming salamat. Ma'am Cindy Vertudes. Maraming salamat po. Ma'am Abigail D. Garciano, thank you so much to all our star senders. Now again, welcome back to members ng ating Team Piaché, Team Thunders, yung mga Luma na nating members, no? Luma, okay, yung mga dati na nating members, of course, welcome, welcome po. At sa mga newbies naman, kawaii-kawaii, make sure that you mention that. 
uh, sa ating live stream para ma-welcome din po kayo ng ating team Facebook, team YouTube, and might also be team Piaget. All right, this is general education. Like, love, share our video. We start with question number one, Filipino. Anong uri ng tayutay ang ginamit sa mga sumusunod na pangungusap? Nabasa mo na ba si Shakespeare? Panulat ang bibig ng isipan. Is it letter A, pagmamalabis? Letter B, sinektoke? Letter C, metonimia? Or letter D, balintunay? What is your choice for question number one? Number one, what's your choice? Sir Erwin Breeze, maraming salamat po. Ganun din kay Ma'am Jenny Zoso Brado for sending us stars. Ma'am Angel Rain, thank you. Ma'am Marikis, Marikis Bakluya and Ma'am Mary Ann Olivar, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, letter C. Okay, I see a lot of letter C's for question number one. Going back to question number one, we are looking for uri ng tayutay, okay? Nabasa mo na ba si Shakespeare? Panulat ang bibig ng isipan. Is this letter A, pagmamalabis? Letter B, sinekdoke? Letter C, metonimia? Or letter D, balintunay? And the correct choice, of course, is letter C, metonimia, okay? Or this is metonymy in English, no? Now, um, the uh, two things, two things here that we usually confuse with each other would be letters B and C. No? So letters B and C. Let's take a look at the difference between sinecdoche and metonymy. Okay, now when you say sinecdoche, now usually you are using a part of a whole. Or it can also be the whole to represent the part. Okay, so here your hint is my sin, which uh, represents sinecdoche, is part of me. Okay, so partisha ng whole. While my mother, which represents the term metonymy, is related to me. So that means when you say metonymy, you are simply using a word which is related to the word that it substitutes. Okay, so sinecdoche, partisha ng whole or whole. And you use it to, to represent the parts. Well, when you say metonymy, you are using a related word, okay, to, to represent um, another term, okay? So uh, another term for sinecdoche in Filipino is pagpapalitsaklaw, while metonymy is also uh, also called pagpapalitawag, no? pagpapalitawag. Now, we have a separate video on this and that's a YouTube channel po natin. Napakarami po nating video dyan sa ating YouTube channel. We have a video about figures of speech, with examples and with Filipino translation. So, balikan niyo po yan lahat. If you have your notes right now, take note niyo po. Watch uh, the YouTube video of Gurung Pinoy on the different figures of speech, its examples, and of course, the Filipino translation. So, keep po ito sa let, no? So, lumalabas po itong lahat sa let. Now, when you say pagmamalabis, on the other hand, okay, now, before we go to that, you know, so okay, I have included some examples here. When you say head count, I need the head count right now. Head count simply means the number of people and of course you know that the head is part of the people okay so kaya sinekto kesha you also have another example which is hands on deck for example you say we will be very busy tomorrow during the party i need all hands on deck okay the hands here represent people and of course hands are part of the people no uh, when you say hands on deck that means everyone should help okay so again these are examples of sinekto okay you are using the part to represent a whole now for your metonymy some examples for this so some common examples would be the pen and the sword now the pen is mightier mightier than the sword the pen there stands for the writers and the sword, of course, would stand for the soldiers. Uh, the pen is mightier, uh, mightier than the sword. A man of cloth. For example, you say, he is a man of cloth, which actually means he is a priest. Okay, so he is a holy man, man of cloth. That's an example for metonymy. Okay, now what about pagmamalabis and balintunay? Of course, when you say pagmamalabis, this is exaggeration, no? so hyperbole or exaggeration in English. Ito yung mga sobrang-sobrang pin, pinapromise sa inyo kung ikaw ay lalaki at ikaw ay nanligaw. Ito yung mga binitawang mong salita nung ikaw ay nanliligaw pa lamang. Tapos nung naging girlfriend, asawa na, wala na, no? bali wala na. Again, this is pagmamalabis, exaggeration, or hyperbole. And then, of course, when you say balintunay, this is irony or paradox. So for example, you say deafening silence nakakabinging katahimika no so irony or paradox all right but we were looking for letter c for question number 1 we move on 
We have question number two. Which of the following graphs is useful in displaying data or information that changes continuously over time? Letter A, bar chart. Letter B, line graph. Letter C, pie chart. Or letter D, histogram. Okay, what is your choice for number two? Again, please do like, love, share our video. Ma'am Efrilu M. Suetos. Sir Noor, Ma'am Pen. Maraming salamat po for both of you. Uh, to both of you for sending us stars. Ma'am Janica Duterte, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Manilin Melgar Salomon. Ma'am Casey, thank you po for sending us stars. Ganun din kay Ma'am Arjun Rostata Mangilimotan. Thank you for sending us stars. Ma'am Yang Yang or Sir Yang Yang, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Dulce de Asis at Ma'am Lena Lazaro. Thank you so much for sending us stars. Ma'am Cherry Ann Bodino Garcia, thank you po. And kay Ma'am Arlene Alidon, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, I see a lot of letter Bs sa ating chat box. Okay, Team YouTube, Team Facebook, and Team Piaché. Many of you, majority of you, is answering letter B. Now, going back to the question, which of the following graphs is useful in displaying data or information that changes continuously over time? Okay, the correct choice here, of course, would be letter B. That's the line graph. Let's take a look at our explanation. Okay, now here you have the different types of graphs. You have the pie graph or the circle graph, no pie chart or circle graph mo. You also have the bar graph and you have the line graph. Yung ating sagot kanina is the line graph. Now, the line graph here is used to show trend. Okay, so trend. Uh, how something changes continuously or so how something would change over a period of time. No? Your line graph is used for that. For example, if you want to show uh, the trend in temperature, the trend in the amount of rainfall, then you are going to use the line graph. No? So trend, how something changes over time, you would be using your line graph. Your pie graph or pie chart or also called your circle, circle chart or circle graph, this is used to show the relationship of the different parts to a whole. So usually, yung ginagamit mo dito sa pie chart mo, no, ito ay ginagamitan mo ng inyong uh, percentage. Okay, So for example, if you'd want to show how you spend your daily allowance or how you spend your monthly income, kung ilang percentage ba for food, ilang percentage for clothing, ilang percentage for rent, Okay, so then you will be using your pie chart. Bar graph, the one in the middle, is used for choices. Okay, so meron kang choices, meron kang variety, meron kang uh, different criteria. Okay, so that's your bar graph. So again, I'm I'm pretty sure, you know, some of you, those of you who've already watched our video several times, and all of you who have been here for a long time, yung members and team founders natin, alam na, yung pagkakaiba ng ating different graphs. Okay? Sa mga newbies natin, letter B po yung ating sagot. So again, line graph is the one that we use for changes or trends over a period of time. Okay? So letter B for question number two. We go to number three. Hila mo'y tabak ang bulaklak ng inig sa paglapit mo. Ito ay galing sa tulang tutube ni Gonzalo K. Flores. Ang tula ay isang patlang. Letter A, Tanaka. Letter B, Epico. Letter C, Haipu. Or letter D, Oyayi. What's your choice for number three? Mamlin B. Pahe. Maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Ganon din si merong Japanese. No? Hindi ko po mabasa. Maraming salamat po. Ma'am Roselia, Ma'am Maril Sotelo, thank you po. Ma'am Ivy Paler Epis, maraming maraming salamat. Ganon din kay Ma'am Katrina, Jules, Olarita, Nesperos, thank you for sending us stars. Ma'am Roxelle Tan, thank you po. Ma'am Shailene and Ma'am Debbie Claire Makalati Alon, maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Okay, ICC sa ating comment box. Okay, Team YouTube. Team Facebook and Team uh, Cache. Ano po yung inyong sagot? Okay, letter C. Letter C, ang inyong choice. Okay, now for this question here, the correct choice, of course, is letter C. This is your haiku. Okay, haiku. Now, when you say haiku and tanaka, tanaka or haiku and tanka in English, uh, these are both Japanese poems, no? Japanese poems po ito, at nagkakaiba lamang sila sa number of syllables, syllables in each line. Okay, so usually, these are uh, poems, no? poems in, Jap in Japan, Japanese poems, 
that would use nature as their subject. Yung haiku mo po would only have uh, three lines, no? So tatlo lamang yung linya, katulad nitong ating example dito sa ating question. And the number of syllables would be five syllables for the first line, seven, seven syllables for the second line, and five syllables for the third line. And so that would be a total of 17 syllables no, for your haiku. Panaka, on the other hand, it has five different lines. The first line would have five syllables, seven syllables for the second line, five syllables for the third line, then seven syllables and also seven syllables for both fourth line and fifth line for a total of 31 syllables, okay? Now, usually, yung binibigay kong uh, hint would be haiku tanaka or haiku tangaka, no? So haiku tangaka. Haiku would only be shorter Tanga ka, no, or tan ka, would be longer. No? So, pinahaba mo pa yung tanaka ka. Mas mahaba yung tanaka ka kaysa sa haiku. No? So, hai na ko. Tanga ka, haiku is shorter than your tanaka. ka. Tana ka is longer. Now, what about your epiko and uyayi? When you say epiko, of course, this is uh, tulang pasalaysay na nagsasaad ng kabayanihan. So, examples for this would be uh, biag nilamang, no? So, ibalon, hudhod, alim. These are examples of your epiko. These are poems na pasalaysay. And usually, you have a superhero. No? Your main character mo is a superhero and uh, he or she would have superpowers. That's your epiko. Oyayi is a lullaby. No? So, lullaby naman yung oyayi. Okay, so letter C for number three. We go to number four. Alin sa mga sumusunod ang mali ang pagkakatumbi? Letter A, Marizal, ito laong laan. Letter B, Andres Bonifacio, ito agapito bagumbayan. Letter C, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, ito uh, Dolores Manapa. Or letter D, Jose Corazon de Jesus, ito Jose Cicio. Okay, what's your choice for number four? Ang bilis niyong sumagot, no? Ang bilis sumagot ng iba. Now, again, make sure that you put the number of the item, no, if that is our question of the day, para po mapasali kayo sa ating list of winners, dapat po may, may number, okay? So, wag lamang answer, no? Kasi minsan magkakasunod na number, the same yung answer, so we cannot be sure. So, dapat po may number if you'd want to join our question of the day. Ma'am Shaira Kaligiran Malayaw, maraming salamat po for the stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Tim Tanse, maraming maraming salamat po for the stars. Sign ko lang yung comment ng ating star sender, Sir Nel Santiago. Good evening, Ma'am Net. Maraming salamat sa mga video at sa pag-explain mo ng klaro. Mas naiintindihan ko po yung mga topic na nahihirapan ako, especially sa Prof. Ed. God bless po. God bless din, Sir Nel Santiago. And of course, thank you for your positive comment. Sir Fitz, Gerald Barairo, maraming salamat po for sending us stars. Watching from Aya, Talisay, Batangas. Hello po sa lahat ng mga taga-Talisay. Okay, number four, ICDs. Okay, tumpak kaya ang letter D. Okay, again, looking back at question number uh, number four, you know, we are looking for mali. No? Mali yung pagkakatumbas. And the correct choice here would be letter D. Ito pa po yung letter D. Jose Rizal, Laong Laan, these are all actually pen names, no? So, um, sa gisag panulat ng ating mga mga manunulat, no? So, Jose Rizal, gumamit siya ng Laong Laan, gumamit din siya ng Timasalang. Andres Bonifacio, marami siyang ginamit. Agapito Bagumbayan is one of those. Marcelo Del Pilar, ay gumamit ng Dolores Manapat, okay? Now, ano yung mali sa so, number four? Jose Corazon de Jesus, was actually known as Joseng Batute. No? So, hindi po Joseng Sisiu, yung kanyang pen name, but it was Joseng Batute. Yung gumamit ang pen name na Joseng Sisiu was uh, Jose de la Cruz. So, Jose de la Cruz naman po yung gumamit na Joseng Sisiu. And so, number four ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay? So, that is a correct choice for number four. Letter D. Letter D pala for number four. We move on with the next question. Mahal kita, mahal kita, hindi to bola. Ngumiti ka man lang sana. Ako'y nasa langit na. Ang salitang pampaniti ka na ginamit sa linya ng kanta ay nangangahulugang patlang. Letter A, pakikipagkaibigan. Letter B, sinisinta. Letter C, napakasaya. Or letter D, bolero. What is your choice for number five? Mahal kita, mahal kita. Oh, hanggang dyan na lamang po. Mahal na yung talent fee. Ma'am Jona V. Ponce, maraming salamat for the stars. Thank you po. 
Okay, what's your choice? Number five. May mga question mark na. B, C, D. Ano kaya ang tumpak na choice for question number five? Again, huwag pong kalimutang i-like, love, at i-share ang ating video. Again, we are uh, doing our live stream in the beautiful Philippines, no? So kung meron pong uh, problema sa ating live stream, babalik po tayo, no? Baka maaari magka-brown out. Alam, alam niyo naman po sa Pilipinas, okay? So pag may problema, uh, babalik po tayo. Okay, I see C's, D's. Now again, for number five, sabi ng number five natin, hinahanap natin yung pampanitikan, no? salitang pampanitikan. Now, when you say salitang pampanitikan, uh, ito yung mga hindi usual natin ginagamit. Kunwari, boyfriend, girlfriend, jowa, yung ginagamit mo sa, pa, sa panitikan would be kabiyak ng dibdib. Okay, so medyo malalalim na mga pananalita yung ating pampanitikan. No? So when you say pampanitikan, going back to your uh, question here, mahal kita, mahal kita, hindi ito bola. Ngumiti ka man lang sana, ako'y nasa langit na. Alin kaya ang salitang pampanitikan dito o yung mga salitang pampanitikan dito? Your pampanitikan na salita dito would be would actually be nasa langit na, nasa langit na. no? So anong ibig sabihin ng nasa langit na? The correct choice here would be Letter C, napakasaya. Ako'y nasa langit na. That means uh, ako'y nasa langit. Sobrang saya ko. Pwede na ako mamatay no? dahil na naabot ko na yung rurok ng kasayahan. Okay? So that would be letter C, napakasaya po yung ating tumpak na choice. Okay? So number, F, uh, no, number, F, number five is letter C. Okay? Letter C po, ligwa. Kung ligwa, okay lang po yan. Move on ka agad. Hindi po letter B. Letter C po yung ating hinahanap for number five. We go to the next item. Okay, you see our logo. And so this means this is our question of the day. What is the last line of the following nursery rhyme? Little Jack Warner sat in the corner eating a Christmas pie. He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum, letter A, and said, what a good boy am I, letter B. And then after had so much fun, letter C, and made all the girls cry, or letter D, and waited for Santa to come. What's your choice for item number six? Again, this is our question of the day. If you want to join, make sure that you have the the, the number. No, let get put a number. Ma'am Annie or Amy Ambalina Mariano, marami, marami salamat po for the stars. Thank you so much to all our star senders. Okay, A, D. Ano kaya ang tumpak na choice for number six? Question of the day pa naman ito, no? So load or GCash for the first uh, five lucky winners, no? So yung lima pong tama sa ating YouTube channel, okay? Hindi po sa Facebook. So po pwede pong manood muna kayo sa YouTube, mag-subscribe, then manood muna kayo sa YouTube, then balik kayo no, sa ating Team Piaché or sa ating Facebook page. Again, um, sa ating pong Facebook at sa ating YouTube channel, napuputol po yung video. So the only method that you can watch a full-length video, balikan po lahat ng ating videos. And uh, of course, our PDF files would be by becoming a member of our teams. No? So Team Piaché for September. And of course, we have Team Bruner for March uh, 2023. Okay, I see letter D is... Okay, tumpak kaya ang letter D. The correct choice here, we are looking for the last line of this nursery rhyme, okay? Little Jack Corner sat in the corner eating a Christmas pie. He put in, he put in his thumb and pulled out a plum. The last line is letter A and said, what a good boy am I. Okay, so letter A po ang tumpak na choice. Alam ito ng ating mga English major, you know, medyo hindi familiar. Pag ikaw ay non-English major or pag ikaw ay B.E.D. na no, medyo hindi familiar sa inyo. Uh, but this is a nursery rhyme titled Little Jack Corner. This is a popular English nursery rhyme. It was early associated with acts of opportunism, pagiging greedy, no? pagiging opportunista, particularly in politics. Okay, so letter A ang ating tumpak na choice for number 6. Okay, hindi ko nga rin alam to, no? hindi siya masyadong familiar to many of us. Alright, we go to number 7. In what part... 
of the female reproductive anatomy does a fetus develop? Letter A, the vagina. Letter B, the ovary. Letter C, the cervix. Or letter D, the uterus. What's your choice for number seven? Okay, number seven. Ano po yung ating tumpak na choice? Oh, sabi dito ni Sir Angelo G. Colinares A. Tumpak siya sa, sa number six na letter A. Na letter A po, salamat sa mga pamangkin ko. Alam ng pamangkin niya. Alright, now what's your choice? Number seven. Pag ikaw ay nanay, pag ikaw ay tatay, siguradong alam mo to, no? What is our choice for number seven? I see this. Oh my gosh. Tumpak kaya ang letter B? Marami din namang letter D. Ano kaya ang tumpak na choice? Okay, for number seven, we are looking for that part of the female reproductive anatomy where the fetus would develop, kung saan nagde-develop yung fetus. Ang fetus, of course, that is your growing kid, no? yung growing child. Uh, it would start from an embryo and, of course, magiging fetus siya. And so, alin yung ating nahanap? Saan nagde-develop yung ating fetus? Sa vagina? Sa ovary, sa cervix, or sa uterus. Okay? Now, the correct choice here would be letter D, the uterus. Uterus po yung ating womb, or uterus po yung ating bahay bata. No, bahay bata sa mga, uh, sa mga babae, no, sa ating mga kababaihan. So, letter D po sa uterus, ito po yung parte ng ating female reproductive system na flexible, no, na elastic. So, that's the uterus. Okay, now here is your female reproductive anatomy, female reproductive uh, system. Do you have the different parts? The grayish parts here in a dark gray would be your ovary. We have the left and the right ovaries. And usually, no, um, the left ovary would give or would, would um, produce one egg cell in a month. Then the next month, yung right ovary mo naman, no, that is... In an ideal setup, pag ideal no, pag your your female reproductive system is working perfectly. Now again, the ovary is that part that produces the egg cell. Now, ladies, kaya tayo sinasabi na yung ladies meron tayong deadline, kasi habang tayo ay nasa loob pa lamang at sinapupunan ng ating uh, mga nanay, ay meron na pong egg cells na produce yung ating ovaries. Pero pagka tayo po ay nag-reach na ng puberty, saka pa lamang magmamature itong mga egg cells na to. And so, kung ilan lamang yung na-produce na egg cells during that time, yan lamang po yung po pwede nating i-produce during our lifetime. Okay? So, kaya medyo uh, may, may deadline, no? Yung mga babae, kailangan eh, huwag kang masyadong maghintay na ikaw ay matanda na, baka hindi ka na mabuntis, no? Yan yung sinasabi nila. Now, your ovary, of course, this would uh, form, this would produce your egg cells, and the egg cells would travel through your fallopian tube. Uh, this is also called your oviduct, no? So, oviduct din yung tawag dito. Ito po yung inoopera, ito po yung sinisurgery during ligation. Kaya siya tinatawag na tubal ligation, fallopian tube is operated. And this is the site of fertilization. Dito po nag-meet ang sperm cell at ang egg cell. Hindi po sa ovary, hindi po sa uterus. That's also another common question in the left, no? So, dito po nangyayari yung fertilization, the meeting of the sperm cell and the egg cell to produce your fetus. And so the sperm cells of the males, the sperm cells of the tatay, need to be very strong and need to be very robust. No? Dapat is strong at um, napaka, napaka maliksi ng sperm cells sa mga tatay kasi marami siyang pagdadaanan. Kaya nga sinasabi na tayong mga anak na naproduce, winners na tayo. You are already a champion. Dahil isang sperm cell lamang po yung kailangan to fertilize the egg cell of your mother. So that sperm cell that was able to fertilize your, your mom's egg egg cell ay winner. Kaya ikaw bilang bata, nung no, ikaw ay nabuo, winner ka na, no? So again, fertilization, the meeting of your sperm cell and your egg cell would happen here in the fallopian tube. Then of course, the growing embryo would have to move to the uterus at dito yung inyong fetus magde-develop. Hindi po siya pwede mag-develop sa fallopian tube dahil yung fallopian tube mo ay hindi elastic. Now, some types of pregnancy would happen. The fetus would try to develop in the fallopian tube and that is what you call ectopic pregnancy. No, ectopic preg pregnancy po yung tawag dyan. Of course, uh, when that happens, ay inaabort po yung bata kasi it would put the life of the mother 
mother at risk dahil mamamatay po silang parehas. Hindi po magpo-fully develop yung fetus when it stops here in the fallopian tube. Ganon din po yung ating nanay kasi ito po ay puputok. Okay? So that's ectopic pregnancy. So when that happens, ino-opera yung nanay and of course the baby is going to be aborted. No? Uh, your answer was the uterus. Ito po ay magsistretch to occupy the, the baby. And then, of course, you have the cervix. Ito po yung ina-IE. Ito yung minimeasure ng ating doktor pag tayo ay manganak. No? Uh, usually, they wait for a certain CM bago ka ipag-labor ng inyong doktor. No? That's the cervix. Napakasakit ng, ng IE. No? So, kayong mga anak, dapat eh, mahalin natin yung ating mga nanay or kayong mga, mga husband, mahalin natin yung ating mga asawa dahil uh, maraming pinagdaanan na nun sila uh, nagbubuntis sa ating mga anak. Okay? So, that's the cervix. Then, of course, yung vagina, there's no need to explain that. Alam nyo na yan. No? Familiar na kayo dyan no? bilang uh, kung ikaw ay babae. Alam mo na, of course, kung ano yung vagina. Kung ikaw ay lalaki naman, meron ka sigurong naging uh, meron kang sister, no? or meron kang pamangkin, meron kang anak. Alam mo na no? kung ano yung vagina. Yan, of course, yung uh, dinadaanan ng ating anak. Okay? So, kung kapag ka normal delivery, no? kapag uh, CS naman, hiwa lang. No? So, ako, CS, dalawang beses ako na CS. And as you know, I still have a two-month-old na baby, no? So, kakapanganak ko lamang po. Alright, but our answer for number seven is letter D. Okay? Now, we go to number eight. What figure of speech is used in this line? 20 sales came into the Manila Harbor today. Letter A, synecdoche. Letter B, metonymy. Letter C, metaphor. Or letter D, simile. What is your choice? Ayan, alagaan ang ha, uh, mga husband, alagaan yung inyong mga asawa. Okay, what is your choice? Um, na-discuss na natin ito sa question number one, no? Ano kaya yung inyong tumpak na choice? Number eight, I see ace. Sa ating comment box, tumpak kaya ang letter A. Ma'am Crizel Jean Ramos, thank you for sending us stars. Hindi ko alam, wala pa akong asawa, sabi ni Sir Prince Hamad. Malapit ang magkaasawa? Matres or uterus? Tama po yung matres. Matres lang ang alam ko, sabi ni Ma'am Lay Lopez. Okay, ICCs and A's. Oo, yung IE talaga napakasakit. No? Yan din yung hates po sa pregnancy, yung IE. No? Yung minimeasure kung ilang CM na yung buka ng inyong cervix. Okay, number eight. What figure of speech is used in this line? 20 sales came into the Manila Harbor, Harbor today. The correct choice, of course, would be letter A. That's sinecdoche. Remember, when you say sinecdoche, the part is representing the whole or vice versa or the whole represents the part. Metonymy naman, uh, you are using a related word, no? So when you say 20 sales here, this actually pertains to your boat, no? Pupwedeng boat, pupwedeng of course, uh, big boats yung ating pinipertain dito, no? So sales pertains to your, pertain to your boat and of course sales are part of your boat. Okay, so sinecdoche po yung ating hinahanap dito, hindi po metonymy, not metaphor and simile. Metaphor and simile are also almost the same, no, their function is the same. But of course, when you say simile, you have the use of the terms like and as, while when you say metaphor, wala pong gamit ng terms na like and as. Your um, uh, simile in Filipino is pagtutulad. Your metaphor, on the other hand, is pagwawangis. Again, meron pong uh, video tayo sa ating YouTube channel ng uh, figures of speech, their examples, and of course, they are equivalent in Filipino. Okay, so letter A po for number 8. We go to number 9. Who is the father of Zerzuela in the Philippines? Letter A, Severino Reyes. Letter B, Lucio San Pedro. Letter C, Ryan Cabiat. Or letter D, Alejandro Covero. Okay, what do you think is the correct choice for number nine? <laughs> Sabi ni Sir Yoj, maglinaw kwenka. Grabe mag-explain si ma'am sa uterus yata to, no? Kapag hindi pa natuto, ewan ko na. Okay. 
Okay, what is our choice for question number nine? Number nine, I see A sa ating comment box. Okay, itong pa kaya ang letter A for number nine. Going back to question number nine, who is the father of Zazuela in the Philippines? Meron tayo nito nung Monday, no? Meron tayong discussion na to. On Monday, kaya po uh, tayo dinidiscuss natin kahit hindi siya yung tumpak na choice, dinidiscuss pa rin natin kung ano yung mga nakikita natin discussion on that kasi po hindi natin alam kung alin dyan sa ating discussion na nabas sa let, no? kasi lahat ito ay uh, tumpak talaga, lumalabas po ito sa ating let, no? galing po ito sa ating mga previous let items. Okay, so iniisa-isa natin dahil hindi natin alam baka, baka si Severino Reyes yung lumabas sa let, baka si Lucio San Pedro, baka si Ryan Kayabiab or si Alejandro Covero. Okay, so for number nine, the question is who is the father of Zerzuela in the Philippines? And ang tupak na choice dito ay si Severino Reyes. Okay, so tama po yan si Severino Reyes. Uh, Severino Reyes I. Rivera was a Filipino writer, playwright, and director of plays. He used the pen name Lola Basyang and he was nicknamed Don Binoy. Okay, so siya po ang tinatawag na father of Zarzuela in the Philippines. Letter A, ang tumpak na choice for number nine. Tingnan natin yung iba pa nating mga choices. Si Lucio San Pedro is a master composer, conductor, and teacher whose music evokes the folk elements of the Filipino heritage. He was a cousin of Botong Francisco. San Pedro produced a wide-ranging body of works that includes band music, concertos for or concertos for violin and orchestra, choral works, cantatas, chamber music, music for violin and piano, and songs for solo voice. He was a composer of Sa Ugoy ng Duyan. While the lyrics was written by Levi Celerio. Okay, tingnan niyo po yan. Baka yan yung lumabas sa inyong let. No? Who was the composer of Sa Ugoy ng Duyan? And your answer will be Lucio San Pedro. Yung composer siya ng Sa, sa Ugoy ng Duyan, yung lyrics naman, was uh, written by Levi Celerio. Both of them were national artists of the Philippines for music. And this song was their most popular collaboration. Okay, so meron na silang collab ni Levi Celerio. Okay, now we go to the other choices. Raymond, Raymundo Kayabiab or Ryan Kayabiab was the executive and artistic director for several years for the defunct San Miguel Foundation for the Performing Arts. He was named as National Artist of the Philippines for Music in 2018. His famous compositions are Kay Ganda ng Ating Musika, The Coconut Nut, Kailan, Can This Be Love, Dimang Dipang Tao, Kumukutikutitap, Tuwing Umuulan at Kapiling Ka, and Paraiso. No? So marami sa mga theme song ng buhay natin ay galing kay uh, Ryan Kebyab, Maestro Ryan Kebyab, no? So, Mr. C. Alejandro Covero naman, or also spelled as Covero, was a Spanish director who introduced the Zarzuela in the Philippines. So, Spanish Zarzuela. Yan naman yung inintroduce ni Alejandro Covero. And soon, Zarzuela became known as, in the Philippines as Zarzuela. Naging Tagalog na, Tagalized na ang Zarzuela. Okay? But then, we were looking for Severino Reyes, letter A, for this item. We go to number 10. Math, your favorite. If A uh, equals 9 times 23 and B equals 9 times 124, what is B minus A? Letter A, 809. Letter B, 906. Letter C, 806. Or letter D, 909. Okay, what's your choice for question number 10? Ano po ang tumpak na choice for number 10? Okay, I see letter D is for number 10. Again, please don't forget to like, love, and share our video. Kung hindi nyo pa po nalalike, nalalove, at then share yung ating video. Maraming salamat po for sending stars and of course for sharing our video. Okay, I see letter D is for question number 10. 
Okay, so again for number 10, you are given you are given the value of A as 9 times 23 and B as 9 times 124, and you're asked for B minus A. Okay, so your your equation is B minus A, no, that is what we are looking for. And B here is 9 times 124 minus A, which is 9 times 2 times 23, no, so times 23. Now 9 times 124 is 1116 minus minus 9 times 23 is 207 and your choice will be letter d 909 okay so letter d 909 gaya gaya na lang yung iba no letter d po ang ating tumpak na choice for number 10 okay so 909 we go to number 11 still math if the ratio of the number of carabao's pigs and cows in a farm is five is to one is two and there are 48 animals in all how many of them are pigs letter a two letter b six letter c four or letter d eight what is our choice okay what's your choice for number 11 and po tumpak na choice for number 11 mga kaguro? Okay, number 11, what is our choice? 